All right, guys, it's uh, August the 22nd or 27th, uh, 2023. I want to do a short video talking about silvo pasture. Um, basically, I, I consider silvo pasture a pasture that you leave some trees in. Um, you know, you talk about, you hear about people planting a lot of trees and trying to establish it that way, but I think one of the simplest ways you can do that is simply not to mow the trees that are already trying to grow. And I'll show you on these hillsides where I've mowed around some trees uh, to establish some silvo pasture. Um, and again, we've only had this farm a couple years, uh, so it's just in the beginning, but I'll kind of show you where we're at now. Okay, so this tree was already in the pasture. This is a big walnut. And then there's a cedar tree at the base of it as well. And then down below it, um, you can see here, 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 and there's a few other small ones off in the distance of some walnut trees that have just, they were already there. I could have very, very easily mowed all these trees down the first time I mowed two, two years ago, um, but I left them and they're starting to grow. Um, you know, they're not all gonna survive probably, but you know, it's a very simple way to, to establish trees in your pastures to simply look for them when you're mowing and mow around them. Um, another thing that helps is if you mow at a high level. So I'm mowing my pasture probably eight to 10 inches tall so even if you accidentally mow over some of these saplings, it usually doesn't kill them and they'll usually still be there trying to come up next year. So you can always try to mow around them in the future. Um, this is a field I just mowed today and I'll show you a couple other, the, the other section across the, across the way. Okay, so this is the same field, the field I just mowed. Um, you can see where we left some, you know, there's some older trees in the middle that have been there for a long time. Um, you can see where we've mowed around and let some of these smaller trees grow up. And then this other side of the hill is where we're getting ready to mow next. Um, and you can see where, you'll see them better after I mow, but in the middle of the field, there's some trees. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like after we get done mowing. Here's the hillside that I've been mowing. You can see, you know, tree there cluster of trees here, a lot more trees down there. Um, I think I counted a total of close to 40 trees. Um, you know, so they may not all live. The cows may rub on some, but a lot of them will live. Um, you know, so it provides shade, provides some diversity to your pasture. Um, this is an area that I had fed hay on last year you can see here's where a hay roll was fed it hasn't recovered yet but there's some grass starting to come up through there um you know there's a tons of ragweed um lots of different weeds uh, one thing i will mention is i do enjoy mowing this time of year or pre prefer to mow this time of year because the fawns are old enough they usually will jump up and run out of the way um you know so you don't have to worry about accidentally running over a fawn. Um, you know, so yeah, there's lots of reasons to wait till later in the year. I know this isn't necessarily pasture the way you want your pasture to look, but I think we have to start thinking about the ecosystem of our farm. So a few parting thoughts. Um, you know, I read a lot of the stuff that Gabe Williams and I'm sorry, Gabe Brown and Alan Williams put out um overall all good information um you know they talk about the farm as an ecosystem um you know and just my thoughts on that are you know just what i've seen today this pasture is extremely what most people consider weedy but it's diverse and it provides enough grass for the cows um sure i'd like to see a little more grass but we're in it's a process and, and we're doing some things to make it better grass um but you know, the other things I did see is I saw a huge fawn, one of the biggest fawns I've ever seen for this time of year. I, he spooked and ran away. Um, I've seen tons of dragonflies flying around. I've seen, um, you know, barn swallows, uh, huge praying mantis, um, you know, and again, I'm not trying to get crunchy. Uh, I just want you guys to think about things. And you know, as, as farmers and ranchers, uh, we're taught to be stewards of the land and and maybe good stewards of the land stewards of the land doesn't look like what you've always thought it looked like 
so I'd encourage you to kind of think for yourself, maybe think about doing some things differently than you've done before uh, and try to make things better. Um, and, and sometimes better means making a change. Um, you know, again, so, uh, you know, went to church this morning, so maybe I'm feeling a little more philosophical than normal, but, you know, think about we're called to, to care for this land and, and think about what that means for you. Um, thank you guys, and I hope you all have a good day.